It's another lady of the house kind of day, and today we are going to be talking about dressing daughters. Welcome back, ladies, and welcome to another episode in my Leading Lady Wardrobe Masterclass, which is on dressing daughters. So I felt like it was so important to discuss this topic because really so much of what we do today, and especially in Leading Ladies, is so that we can also dress our daughters, we can teach our daughters. And this is an area that I think especially right now, we have more of a struggle in than ever before. So if that is something that you can relate with, please let me know that in the comments below. I think a big part of that is because there was a really big shift at some point in what was available for our daughters. And then of course, all of the different things that they would see on TV, all of the different things that they would see on social media. And so Kids are heavily influenced, right? And especially with those areas. And we all want to find ourselves and figure different things out, especially when it comes to dress. But I know that so much of what is out there now is something that a lot of parents really have to fight against when it comes to dressing their daughters because they just don't feel that it really represents what it would be that they would want their daughters to wear, how they would want to present themselves. So it just poses a really big issue. Now, of course, in the past when mothers were making their own daughters clothes, this may not have even been an issue because they would just get what they would get. And it wasn't so available that, you know, all of the fast fashion and, and of course the advertising and everything like that. So we do find ourselves in a really big struggle today when it comes to dressing our daughters and not just our daughters, our sons as well, but I think especially our daughters. And I just want to walk you through what I have felt over the years. So for myself, what I have noticed growing up is that we go through these phases. We go through these phases of, you know, wanting to fit in and then we change all of the things that we at one point loved so dearly. So our mothers are really excited about dressing us when we are babies. And then, you know, we have all of the pretty frilly dresses. We just look so cute and neat and well-kept. And then we start seeing ourselves and want to dress ourselves. And and I think for a long time, most of us as young girls, we do love the dresses. We love to look pretty. And then we go into elementary school and we start becoming influenced. And this is, of course, if you're, if you go to school and not so much about, you know, the homeschooling side of it. Um, And so then you're very heavily influenced by the other girls around you. What is everybody else wearing? And this really does get amplified when you move into middle school. And then the focus changes a little bit. So it's not so much about looking pretty and cute. It's more it starts leaning towards wanting to attract the male gaze. And so then you start making different choices based off of that and not necessarily good ones because you are seeking some kind of attention there. And oftentimes we don't take the time to encourage our daughters to seek good attention. It's almost like sometimes we just completely dismiss the whole idea, right? Because we want to keep them pure and and just we want them to make really good decisions. So we don't even talk about this subject. And I think that it's really important to talk about with our girls and just the real feelings that we end up having and, and what we want out of life. And certain things 
it's good that we want those kind of things. It's good that, for instance, you would want to attract the male gaze. This is a natural thing, but that doesn't mean that you should choose sexy over beautiful. And so teaching our daughters about what that looks like, it's going to be difficult, especially now because we have this this battle that we're fighting here against everything that they might see on social media and of course all of the other girls at their school and what they are wearing and what they are allowed to do and so then okay let's get past middle school here we get to high school and then it's full force that is one of the hardest times to really wrangle in all of those different feelings and the the way that she may want to dress and I am right there with them because that was something that was really difficult for me as well and so um, I think the most important thing there is to have that open conversation to to set strict or I should say to set firm guidelines of what is expected and what is just non-negotiable. And then also after that, then it's like, okay, they're still trying to fit in there. We go from high school maybe to college or just right into working. And then we start to just try to figure out, okay, how do I go from dressing like a teeny bopper to being a little bit more mature. And I would say around 25, between 25 and 30 is when usually a woman would want to start looking more mature, looking more her age, and kind of focusing on different things there. And then I feel for the rest of our lives, we are trying to get back to feeling as if we can be ourselves. So you have this time when you are, you know, in your 20s going into 30s and you're wanting to fit in but in a different kind of way and then you finally figure out that you just want to be you and you want to be able to enjoy those things and have that lightness, that carefreeness that you once had when you were a child and what you loved. So all along the way, I feel that that is what I have been trying to encourage my audience, all of you with, is to feel free to dress the way that you really love to dress without the concern of what other people may think. And I feel that so many of us can relate on the fact that we want to dress in a beautiful way and we lo- so many of us love dresses and would love to get back to dressing that way, a way that we really enjoyed when we were younger. And so I think it's really important to have that conversation with our daughters and just how so many women even today struggle with this. They struggle with being themselves and be having that courage to wear those things, not saying that you have to look so out of the ordinary, right? And I understand that wearing dresses is by today's standards a little bit more out of the ordinary, or let's just say dressing in general or dressing up and not putting on yoga pants or even just putting on jeans every day. It's a little bit more out of the ordinary, but really it's not. It's not out of the ordinary. Dressing like a lady, dressing like a woman is very normal. And you wanting to dress in that beautiful way is something that is very normal. So I say embrace that and don't try to think so much about maybe what other people are doing in that way. So these are important conversations, I think, to have with our daughters. So I wanted to walk down just a few key points here and cover these topics. I would love to hear what you have to say on these subjects as well. And you know, just have a great conversation about this. Now, I am going to be sharing 
a couple of my daughters and what they have been wearing. These dresses right here were all gifted to me by what was Virginia Dare Dress Company is now Dare & Co. I have their website linked in my description box below if you are interested along with a discount code for you. So before we get into these topics, I do want to share each of these dresses. The first one is the Samantha Wrap Sky Blue dress. This also comes in a navy, but I really love this color and all of these were actually sent to me for me to wear, but I have since not been able to wear them anymore. So unfortunately that is the case, but fortunately I do have daughters that I can pass them on to. This Samantha wrap dress in the sky blue is one that my daughter Ayla has been wearing and I think that it looks perfect on her. I think that it fits her proportions really well, especially with the length. The one thing that I had an issue with for myself was that it was a little bit shorter than I typically like to wear my dresses at. So that's why even as I gained a little bit of weight, I felt like the proportions for me were off. So I think that it looks great on her though. And it's wonderful when we can pass some of our our own items down to our daughters, especially depending on what age they are and if what you wear kind of falls in line with their style as well. And so something that I do encourage is a more timeless look for my girls. And that is one of the areas that they really do focus on with this company. I think that they do a wonderful job of keeping their dresses very timeless. And something that's great about this one dress, it has pockets. Actually, I think all of her dresses have pockets. Um, so anyway, it has pockets. It's a beautiful wrap design and it's a true wrap. It's not a faux wrap. And then moving on to the next dress is the June dress. This one, I had made a video about this in the past as well. It's a beautiful floral print and this one is in a length that is more my cup of tea, I would say. So this was really nice, but it was a little too snug on me. So I think that this dress fits my middle daughter, Kira, so much better than it does myself. If I were to get it again, I would probably go up one or two sizes. Actually, when I did receive it, it was I felt like I could still wear that size, but it was a little bit tighter in the chest portion. So because of that, I would probably size up two more sizes. So the only thing with that is if the waist is a little too long on me. So sometimes that can be a little bit more difficult. But anyway, I think that this dress fits her so well. It looks pretty on her. She loves to wear bright colors and so I think that this whole print looks fabulous on her. And then the last dress that I'm sharing with you is the Audrey floral dress. This one is just wonderful because it's a heavier fabric, it has pockets as well, and it stretches. So it's a very thick fabric and I think that the stretch on it is great. It doesn't have any zippers, um, just something that you can throw on over and the little um, floral detail on there just makes it so nice that you could wear anywhere. You can dress it up, you can dress it down. And I have Ayla right here. She's wearing this one. I think that it looks great with her coloring. And so that was one of the things that, um, when they did offer me this dress, I let them know that I think this dress would be perfect for her. So it really is. And I think it will be really nice going into the fall months as well. It's a good dress all year long, really, but it is a little bit thicker. So definitely to me, I think that it works well in the fall and winter season. Season. Rebecca is the founder and she says, I believe that how we approach each day is how we approach life as a whole and that the clothes we choose to wear each morning help determine our outlook. Adding beauty to our lives through small details is at the heart of everything we do.
So a big thank you to Darren Co. for these beautiful dresses. And if you fancy any of them, I hope you will go and see all that they have to offer over on their website. Okay, now let's walk down this list of some of those areas I think are very important. The first thing being our example. As mothers, it is so important to have that good example, to set that good example. So much of what we do speaks louder than what we say to our daughters. And so if they can see that you get up every day, you get dressed, you put on your best and you put your best foot forward each day, that will be something that they will remember. Even in those moments where they're really not going, you know, they might want to fit in more and everything. As they get older, it will be something that they will remember and that they will think on. So definitely, be that example and especially when it comes to those things that you are going to require of them right when when you're raising up your daughters you want to have a certain standard that you're going to you know just set and that means that you will want to have that standard for yourself as well children like to know what the guidelines are because this keeps them on that path that they know, you know, if they start to go off of, they know what to expect. They know that, you know, you're not going to be too happy about that. And so they're usually going to want to do what they know would be the right thing to do. Now, of course, we always have, you know, those that are going to test the waters, but still just to have that standard and you can always refer back to that will make things a lot easier. Now, what do I mean by the standard? Well, let's just say that maybe your standard is that everything has to go along with whatever the school dress code is, okay? If it's everything has to be below fingertip length, if it's everything has to be three fingers wide, whatever it is, or maybe your standard is what you have read in the Bible, or maybe your standard is just what another lady that you have looked up to in the way that she wanted to dress her children. This might be something that, you know, you take some time to really consider what makes you feel the most comfortable in what kind of things would be exposed or not and also with in mind thinking about them as they age so when you have a daughter that is seven years old things will definitely change when she is 13 14 years old and so never begin something or allow something that you are going to have to change or not be okay with later on down the road because this will be very confusing i would say now one of the great things to talk with our daughters about i believe is intention and the intent of the heart and that has so much to do with the way that we present ourselves so really considering those kind of things and having that discussion about, you know, why is it that you want to wear X, Y, and Z? Why is it that you want to, even down to presenting yourself in a lovely way? I think that those are great conversations to have. I think that it just helps us to even understand ourselves. So much of the way that we present ourselves does speak volumes to other people who will never even speak to us, right? Who will never even hear a word that comes out of our mouth. So teaching them to consider these things, to consider how what you put on says so much to other people and what it is that you are looking for. So this is one of the reasons why I did bring up the subject of tattoos and not just for you know women but i also want to reiterate that for young girls because this is such an important conversation some things that we may think would be a good idea when we're younger as we get older it may not be what we want to portray to the world it may not be that intent that we are looking for for so many people of what that stands for and i know that there can be so many different thoughts behind this but really 
I would encourage you if you want to know more about it and want to know more about the way that men especially think of this, then search up videos about how men feel about women and tattoos. And this would be something that would be really great to think about way before they're even thinking about getting married, just to have in the back of their mind, just to teach them about, you know, even regrets that other women have as they get older and different challenges that they have had because of choices that they have made. So there can be intent with that. There can be intent with, you know, where you want to see yourself in the future, but also just what it is that you're looking for in general and the way that you are coming across to other people, because there is judgment that's out there. And we can't control the way that people perceive us, the way that people um, judge us based off of those things that we put on, those things that we choose to, um, even, even if we do our nails, right? Say we're doing really long nails and that is looked at more aggressively in, and um, to just listen to the way that a man thinks about long nails and um, his thought process behind that. It may end up kind of um, helping you to guide yourself in what you really want to do because it's really not all about just every way that you want to present yourself, especially if you're trying to consider certain things that you are trying to come across as, right? So if you're trying to come across more ladylike, I would say, then consider the way that you present yourself even down to your nails. Because if you are looking to come across more aggressively, just know that you are going to limit your pool of men that much more because that's not something that many are really drawn to. Now, we're not discussing personal preference here when it comes to what we put on our own body or how we display different things because there's also a selflessness behind this right there's a selflessness to even what we put on every day because we do want to consider the way that other people are perceiving us they we do want to consider how we're coming across to someone else and to make other people feel comfortable in a sense of modesty and you know just really um arrangement thinking about overall arrangement and having a really wonderful arrangement and usually that is something that if you are a lady you are concerned about is having a lovely arrangement just know that that's what it means by using good judgment okay there are going to be there there's just going to be judgment there's judgment all around us you me we all make choices based off of judgment and hopefully we're making those choices based off of using our good judgment and so when you do want to think along these lines and what would be most ladylike and also in guiding your daughters in which way they should go or not these are things to really consider. These are things to have those open discussions about because we want what's best for our daughters. And so therefore, we need to teach them these these things and how their choices today are going to definitely affect them long down the road. Now, I think so many of us really do wish to have that overall allure that you know, others would be drawn to, whether it be men, whether it be women, whether it be children, whatnot. But just know that when it does come to men, that the less a woman uncovers, the more alluring she is. And so if this is something that we can actually teach our daughters and the value of, and just to value themselves, this is definitely a way that she can become more alluring. Now, I feel that there is so much that I can say about dressing daughters, but I had to just pick, you know, a few things here. So before I leave you, though, I wanted to share with you about putting some of this into practice and especially at a young age. So when they are young, 
You want to teach them about keeping themselves covered, especially if you want them to be wearing dresses and you know, you're, they want to wear a dress, you're putting them in dresses. Some of the things that we need to consider too are just the way that we sit, for instance. So one of the things that I did talk about before was putting them in front of a mirror or even yourself. I did encourage all of us to sit in front of a mirror just to see what other people see, especially someone who's sitting across from you. So this is something that I definitely encourage my girls to do. And however, we're not always in front of a mirror and we need to be those eyes for our daughters and just, you know, their overall modesty. So one of the, the, um, code words or the code names that I had for my girls was London because we used to say, you know, I see London, I see France, I see whoever's underpants. And so instead of saying that though out in public, because of course, if you said that, then everybody would look and we're not trying to get everybody to look at their underpants. So one of the things I would say is London, and that was our code name. And they knew that if I was looking at them and I said London or something like that, they knew that they needed to adjust themselves so that nobody could see their underpants. So if that is something that you have for your own daughter or you remember that you had given, you know, a little code name for them, please share that in the comments below. But there was this video in the video. I think I said London and my youngest daughter, she looked at me and she goes, these are not my Londons. And so she, she called them Londons and it's just so funny. I loved just, you know, their innocence and, and it's just so cute. All of these conversations can be a little bit more difficult to have with our daughters and yet they are such vital conversations to have and just the overall way that we present ourselves to the world and just you know being being happy to be that daughter and being happy to enjoy all the different things that come along with that so thank you so much for being here with me today i really hope that you enjoyed this video and i look forward to seeing you in my next one mm -hmm.